Yo, what's up mountain bikers? Today I want to talk to you about a session that you can use to ride smoother and faster on the downhills. So it's actually really important to be able to pace properly on a downhill. You've probably seen it a million times before where someone starts with a sprint out of the gate and then every chance they get to pedal, they're pedaling as hard as they can. Well, actually that's probably not the right strategy for you it's probably not for them either. The problem with any unnecessary pedaling is that it's gonna make you tired. When you get tired, you over brake and you have no exit speed in the corners and eventually you'll just crash. You're not riding smooth at all. The old adage smooth is fast does not apply if you're pedaling too much. And I'm gonna show you a little bit of science and how you can try this for yourself. Okay, so to the science. So firstly, I remember doing a race myself. It was a Super D race when I first moved to New Zealand and we got to do two runs. Now that was pretty cool because the first run, I went as hard as I possibly could. The second run, I rode it a little bit smoother, firstly because I was tired, but also I was a little bit scared of the slippery conditions. The course was getting worse and worse as it went. But actually I ended up getting my fastest time on the second run. It was really interesting because I went back and I looked at my pacing and my power output throughout that. And it was really surprising to see that even on the slowest bits of the course, which were the pedaling sections, I was going slower, but I ended up going faster overall. That really opened my eyes to this idea of pacing on downhills. Later on, I was doing my PhD and we were looking at pacing on a downhill that was super fast, super straight. And uh, yeah, it was actually a really sick downhill, but the cool thing about it was that you could get through it with coast, but you felt slow, but you could send it. So what we did is we set up this test session where people are using the portable gas analyzers, heart rate, we're measuring power and all those things. And what we found is there was actually no difference in time, whether you were coasting or pedaling. And what happened was if you were pedaling, you got more out of breath, which actually that totally makes sense. You got more out of breath because you were pedaling more. What that means is that if you're coasting more, you're saving more energy. So that actually is a really interesting concept to take across if we're doing something like an XC race where we then have to climb again, or even something like a really long downhill where we know what happens. We start making mistakes as we go. And you can think about this the last time you did a 10 second all out sprint on the road. Now you feel totally cross-eyed after you finish this. Why would we do the same thing when we're about to head into the gnarliest section of the track? If the idea is to get down this hill as fast as possible, we want to ride as smoothly as possible. And we can't do that when we're cross-eyed. Things have come a long way now and we have brake ace so we can actually see how much more you brake as you get tired. And here's where you can try it yourself. So if you're a downhill or an enduro racer, pick two tracks. Now the first run on the first track, go all out. Race it as you normally would. Then do your liaison or your transfer back and do that same track again. But this time, go at 90% effort. So throughout this test, measure your heart rate, your power output, and of course your braking. Now, you might feel like you're going really slow when you're going at 90%, but this is what most racers do to get the most out of themselves. Now go to another track and try it in reverse. This time start at 90%, then finish with another all out session. My guess is that when you're riding at 90%, you probably will get a faster time. Of course, if there's climbs, you need to pace them properly too, but it's worth a try. Now, if you're an XC racer, we haven't forgot about you because skills and braking are still super important and obviously power output comes into play too. If you're an XC racer, pick a track pick a local loop that has, it takes about 15 minutes, like a normal XC lap. Now the first run, go all out. Race it like it's your first lap and start how you normally would, go as hard as you can. Look at your time, look at your power output, look at your braking. Now come back again and ride that at 90%. And I'm almost positive you'll go faster when you're riding at 90%. You'll be able to ride with more flow, you'll break less, you'll make fewer mistakes, and you'll actually save more in your tank for when you really need to pedal. So that's worth a try. Of course, when you're doing this, make sure the track's safe and there's no one around. But I think you'll learn a lot about yourself when you try this session. So it's really easy to do and it's worth doing because we can work out all we want, but skills at the end of the day are also still really important for mountain bikers and we need to be able to use them. And we can't use our skills when we're totally smoked. So give it a try, let us know what you think. Check the description down below. We have a link to the article about it along with some data. And we also have a podcast about this too. All right, let us know what you think. Thanks.